So we're going to title this lecture Finding Our Way in the Body. There are a number of terms used in anatomy to define location. Most of these terms are relative. To one another. Oh, you can't see all that on there. Sorry to our viewers at home. Number of terms used in anatomy to define location. Most of these terms are relative to one another. Is the ceiling in this classroom tall? It, it could be. It, it depends on how tall you are, and it depends on what you're comparing it to, what it's relative to. Compared to the Empire State Building? No, not really. You know, uh, com compared to this this marker, yes, yes, it's much taller than this marker. Okay? And, and in these anatomical terms, we're going to use terms to compare one to another. So every term that I'm going to teach you is going to have sort of its relative or its, its counterpart. So let's start with this one. Superior. <laughs> The word superior simply means above. So what term do you think would mean below? Inferior. Inferior means below. So, so just like on the face, you know, there's a terrible face and a couple of eyes and a nose and mouth one eyebrow down maybe I'm angry maybe I'm what <laughs> animal hawk okay so in this case the eye is superior to the mouth the mouth is what inferior to the eye so these things are relative terms. You see how they all kind of work with one another. There really is not a whole lot of absolute. This is except maybe the very top of your head and the very bottom of your foot being absolute inferior and absolute superior. All right. Well, then next, there is terms for front and back. Anterior and posterior. I've heard the word posterior for this as well. You, you know, either one's fine with me. Anterior means front. Guess what posterior means? Yep. You guys are awesome. Now, for us, it means the same exact thing as these next two terms but it's not true for all organisms. In fact, it's not true for anything besides really us. Okay, there is the word ventral and dorsal. Ventral means belly side. Dorsal is backside. Which is not super helpful. You're like, well, isn't that the same thing as these two? Yeah, it kind of is, but really only for us. So for human beings, anterior is the same as ventral, posterior is the same as dorsal. Okay? But here's how this works, folks. All right, here's Stick Guy. He's facing forward, taking a little stick walk there. It's forward motion. <coughs> You know, I don't know, he's power walking, so he's like holding this weights here, I guess. I don't know. Or, or a capital I. I'm not sure what his world's like. He's looking up at something. 
but he's walking stick dog. Your stick dog. It's bad, isn't it? I want to put an ear, but he ends up looking like a reindeer if I do that. <laughs> he needs a little leash, a little slack in the leash. He's not tugging too hard on Stick Dog's neck. <laughs> you know what? Maybe this is a cappuccino. Let's make him a guy of today here, you know, and put some earbuds in. He's listening to some hip tracks. You know, I don't know why it's strapped around his torso <laughs> there, but it is, okay? All right. For Stick Dude, okay, this side is both what? Anterior. Anterior and what? Ventral. Ventral. For stick dude, this side is both? Dorsal. Posterior and dorsal. Posterior and dorsal. Now, for stick dog, this side is? Anterior. Anterior. And that's it. But this side here is? Dorsal. The back of the dog is dorsal, which is why if he'd had it, if it was a shark, it'd have a dorsal fin. In fact, let's make him shark dog. Here we go. He's got a dorsal fin because it's on his back. This side of stick dog is what? Ventral. And where the poop comes out is posterior. So posterior poop. I think that. There, there we go. <laughs> There's an association for you and our viewers at home. All right. So. Um, that's how we, we orient like this. But you see, because we walk upright, because we're hominids and we walk on two feet, our anterior also happens to be our ventral. But for, for four-legged animals and anything that crawls on its belly and pretty much anything else, even a fish without legs, you know, because of how they're oriented, their, their dorsal side is their back, like a shark. That's why it's got a dorsal fin, because it's on its backside. Okay, so... That would be probably the most confusing of all these terms. The rest of them get a little bit easier, okay? Now I got that ooh child song. Ooh child, things are gonna get easier. <laughs> the five stair steps. <laughs> I love it. All right. I was listening to that on a loop a few weeks ago. I just couldn't get enough of it. Someday. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna play it in a minute. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. How about this one? Medial and lateral. What these two mean is this. There is in us, if we're looking at the front side of us here, there is an imaginary midline as human beings, we are what's known as bilaterally symmetrical, which means that our right half is roughly about like our left half, okay? And there would be a line that could potentially bisect us into roughly even portions, though I wouldn't recommend it, okay? <laughs> now, things that are closer to this midline are considered medial. And this is the only place the midline exists because there's no other way to bisect the body that it could even be close to even where you get even half. Top and bottom, you got legs and a face that's not the same, okay? Front to back is also a mess. So, so closer to midline. Guess what lateral means? Yeah, further from or away from midline. So, um, so your eye is medial to your ear. Your eye is medial to your ear. Your ear is lateral to your eye. They're relative, okay? These come into play a lot when we start really naming features. And having a really good handle on this will make learning anatomy so much better, faster, quicker, memorable when you understand how and why. That it's not just a list of terms to try to memorize, you understand the why behind that. Okay, so then we need to talk about what happens on our limbs here as well. Okay, there are these two terms. 
proximal and distal. Which one of these do you think is closer? Proximal. Why do you say that? Because it looks like proximity. In fact, that's where the word proximity comes from, is from the, from the same root as the word proximal. And this one sounds a little like which word? Distant. Distant, which suggests that it's further away. So this means closer to body on a limb. This means further from body. On a limb, or an attached part, it gets pretty, gets pretty weird there. So try to avoid that. Um, let me use these as an example. Okay, it's my fingers. It's interesting they call them fingers, but you never really see them fing. <laughs> Sorry, the bus driver on The Simpsons said that. You know they call them fingers, man, but I never see them fing. <laughs> Couldn't get that out of my head. I'm going to teach you 56 bones in one word. Are you ready? Phalanx. Say that with me. Phalanx. Phalanx. You just said the name of 56 different bones. Okay? These, all the bones of all your fingers and toes are all phalanges, which is the plural for phalanx. The only distinction between these is how close they are to the attached point on your body. This one here, the bone that's on underneath this skin and muscle here is which phalanx? It is the distal phalanx. The one that is the closest here is the proximal, proximal phalanx. Now, in the middle, what would the dumbest thing to name it be? Middle. middle. And that's <laughs> what it really is. That's called the middle phalanx. You know, we were like, that doesn't sound sciencey enough. Should it be medial? No, because medial means something completely different. This is middle. It really is just middle phalanx. So distal phalanx, proximal phalanx, middle phalanx are the first finger. I'm sorry, second finger, because your first finger is this one. Now this one is where it gets weird. This is why you have 56 instead of 60. This bone only has, uh, this muscle only has two, or uh, this finger, this digit only has two bones. This one here, which is distal, distal and this one here, which is Proximal, yeah, just the two. Your big toe is the same way. It only has two. Okay, all right. So uh, let's see. There's there's a couple more. Here here's one. Okay. Superficial, and then the opposite of that is. <laughs> this is gonna sound dumb when I say it. It's like look at all this this huge word superficial. This next one is. Deep. <laughs> that is all it is. Deep. Yeah. If someone is calling someone else superficial, what are they saying? Fake. A lot of times they mean fake, but what it really means is shallow. And that's what this is. Shallow. Or close to surface. And deep literally means just deep, or I don't want to define it with itself, away from surface. <laughs> so if we look at it, what we're going to have, like, you know, if I look at a cross section of the arm here, here's a radius and ulna arm. <laughs> okay, so there's your skin. Those are bones. Which one of these is superficial? Bones. Skin or bones? Skin. Skin. Yeah. Skin. Superficial. Bones are deep because they're further in. Does that make sense? Okay. I think set about cover it. Interior, posterior, superior, inferior. I think that ought to get it. Okay, there's a few other ones you wouldn't wouldn't use quite as often, but for our purposes today, I think we can get by with these here. Are there any questions about this? Oh, all 
right.